Hello, welcome to tutorial number 10 of the basic iOS programming series. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to integrate CocoaPods into our project, basically so that we can use them in the next tutorial. So what are CocoaPods? CocoaPods are, well, it's a dependency manager and it has loads of libraries really. Um, most projects, especially open source or even uh, private source companies will use uh, probably typically at least one pod per project or, or even more it really depends but it's something that you can't avoid when uh, doing programming in iOS really so how do we install CocoaPods to start with you just run sudo gem install CocoaPods in terminal I already have it installed so I won't run it you just hit enter there and it should install um, so what are we going to install? We're going to presume so that it's already installed. So if I click pod, type pod into terminal, and you can see that I've got it installed fine, which is what you should have as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to install Alarmifier, which is a networking library pod, um, and it just makes handling any, everything of networks easier. Uh, network requests, serialization from responses, um, it just makes life much easier. So what we do to install the pod into our Xcode project, um, we need a pod file. Um, so what we can do is you can go into terminal and cd into your project folder. So if I go pwd, you see I'm in the right location. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go touch pod file. And we can see that we have a pod file now in our directory. Then I'm going to go sudo nano pod file. If I type my password in correctly, it'd be fantastic. So this is our pod file. Um, and at the start of the pod file, we're using Swift, so we typically need this. Well, we, we always need this at the top of the pod file. And then. Um, you can split out pods between targets or not, but we're going to keep it simple and just include uh, the pod alarm fire at version 3.4 around. So what we can do is we can press Control X to save this. Yes, and then we just overwrite it. So if we do cat pod file, we can see that our pod file now has um, alarm fire as a reference. So now we can. Now that we've got the pod file created, we and that we're sure that uh, CocoaPods is installed on our system, we can simply run pod install. Now, hopefully, it shouldn't take too long to install Alarmifier. Um, yeah, while it's installing, does green tea chocolate for when you need green tea and chocolate in the same product. Fantastic. I'm going to pause the video while it's installing, um, but I'll be right back once it's finished. Okay, so Alarma Fire is installed. Um, now, what we need to do is we need to do an ls minus la to show the files. And you can see that it's created a file called uh, tutorial1.xc workspace. And now moving forward, uh, we need to open Xcode with that and not Xcode project because the pods are basically integrated into XC workspace. So let's open it correctly. That is the wrong folder. Here we go. So let's double click on XC workspace. And you can see we've got our pods target on that side, our pods project. If we click on here, see pods.framework is there. Now let's just try and run it in the simulator quickly and see what happens. Actually, wait, this before we run it in the simulator, let's see if we can use alarm of fire. So if I could say import alarm of fire. And it's not allowing us to import it, probably because we've not linked it. So then we 
we go to our project linked frameworks and libraries and then we click on alarmify.framework let's just include that then let's jump back to here alarmify okay so let's clean uh, our build let's go here and click clean and now let's uh, build it for the simulator might take a second and you can see now it's importing okay I'm not really sure why you have to go through that process of cleaning then uh, building it's a bit annoying um, but I suppose it's the way to get it working so now we can use the llama fire within our project we won't be using it in the home controller so i'll just delete it from there for, for now um, but in our next tutorial we're going to be making network requests and receiving data and handling the data and serializing the data so um, until the, the next episode thanks for watching uh, see you next time bye bye